but in terms of uh, Enoch, like what as as modern day Christians, why should we care? Like why why mm-hmm. is studying? I, I guess on the one hand, why is studying that important? And in terms of literature, how does it relate and differentiate itself from the Bible? Because uh, you know, I feel like unless you maybe lean a little bit more into either the the areas that you study or some of our friends who spend time in that that magical place we call Christian Middle Earth. Right. You may, some people have never even heard of Enoch other than references in the Bible, so they, they don't even know what we're talking about yet. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the quick answer to why it matters is that Enoch, the book of Enoch, all, scholars refer to it as first Enoch. There's, there's actually more than one. But the first one is the one that counts because it, it dates before the New Testament. It is a, a piece of literature written by very theologically faithful, conservative Jews, a Jewish writer. And there are a number of things in it that presage uh, not only, you know, presage New Testament theology, even um, messianism. For instance, this second volume, the, the, the parables of Enoch, chapters 37 through 71, that's actually an emphasis in that section of the book. So you will have, you know, how many of us have been treated to the TV show. It's always around Easter or Christmas. You know, the TV show, the magazine on the impulse shelf at the grocery store, you know, where it says, you know, the, the Christ of faith versus the Jesus of history, you know, trying to drive a wedge between these two things and how the New Testament writers, you know, the, all this theology about the deity of Christ and pre existence and messiahship. And this is all invented by the church later and thrown back into the New Testament. Well, yeah, except for books like Enoch that have all that stuff in it a couple hundred years before Jesus showed up. <laughs> you know, So it, it's a really good example of how Jews were thinking about Messiah prior to Jesus. Now, there's a lot of other stuff in the book that bleeds into the New Testament or that comments and shows you how Jews and serious people, they think the Hebrew Bible is the word of God, you know, like we do, okay? But how they're thinking about the Old Testament, but also, again, you, you get this, these streams of interpretation that when you get to the New Testament, it's like, okay, you know, if I had read the book of Enoch, I would think I've seen this before. So it really cuts off at the knees a lot of these, these notions that New Testament writers are just making stuff up. Uh, they're not. They, they are firmly within one strand of what we would call intertestamental Judaism. And it, it's very interesting to see how they were handling Old Testament passages and how that compares with what the New Testament writers are doing. Um, so it, it contextualizes what New Testament content is, you know, about Messiah and about other things. The Book of Life, these heavenly books, there's a lot of stuff like that in Enoch. Lake of Fire, Final Judgment, just the general, you know, apocalyptic stuff, you know, that you read in the book of Revelation. Guess what? Enoch was there first, you know? So th- there's, there are these threads that just run through from the, the Old Testament through the Jewish, the serious Jewish community in between the Testaments on into the New Testament. And so it just helps us be better readers of the New Testament. We, we kind of know and, and can get at what they're, you know, we can pick up what they're laying down a little more because we have some of this other literature to help us show how, how they were thinking, what they were basing these interpretations on in certain passages, you know, the Old Testament or just, you know, commentary within the, their own community about, look at all this stuff in the Hebrew Bible. I wonder what it means, you know, like how do we connect the dots? So they're busy in, the, in between the Testaments doing that. And the New Testament writers, you know, are, will often repurpose and utilize, you know, that sort of content. So it just, it, it helps us be more intelligent readers, you know, of the stuff that is inspired. I don't think Enoch is inspired. I, I understand the question because there were a few old, you know, early church figures that, that thought and argued that Enoch should be included in the canon, which was a, a debate that was, you know, overwhelmingly lost. <laughs> And, and those guys owned up to it. You know, it's like, okay, we lose. You know, we, we assume the Holy Spirit has guided the masses of the church one direction and it ain't ours. We're, we're okay with that. Um, so I know why the question is asked, but a, a book doesn't have to be canonical or inspired to be useful. 
you know, Peter quotes from Enoch, Jude quotes from Enoch. There's stuff in the Gospels that, again, are directly traceable to, to things in Enoch. It, you know, it has its, its fingerprints on the New Testament in a lot of places, even if it's not a direct quotation. So it's, it's useful to know what in the world the book's about. And that's why I'm, I'm doing the reader's commentary. It's not a verse by verse technical commentary. It's, hey, if, if Mike was in the room while you're reading Enoch, okay, you know, I could look over your shoulder and say, okay, this phrase over here, that's what they're talking about. Or this section, I don't say anything about it, just ignore. <laughs> just keep going. You know, the, the, the juicy stuff's coming up in a few pages, you know, that, that sort of thing. So it's kind of like intended to be a guide on what in the world, you know, he's saying and, and then how it, how it attaches to either the Old or the New Testament.